Hey guys, I'm Paco the Realtor. 16 years of experience helped over 200 families buy and sell the American dream. I'm a local expert, I'm a professional, and I take care of my clients. I pride myself in educating my clients, and I'm also really sarcastic and a storyteller. All right guys, how's everybody going? This is Paco, Paco the Realtor, your friend of real estate, local expert, storyteller. Well, today I bring Carl Bunch. Say, hey, Carl. Say hello, Carl. How you doing? Good to be here. All right, Carl is somebody that we all need but are embarrassed to talk to. You know when you go to, like, to, the, to the doctors and you have something you want nobody to know about? Well, that's Carl for our real estate industry. He is a credit repair person. Carl Bunch Credit Repair. We have all, at, all, at times have all had issues with our credit, small or big, uh, but we're always scared to say that we don't have good credit. We're always scared that we screwed up because people are going to judge us, people are going to say stuff about it, and all that good stuff. So today I want to address the fear and just fit, and then just hit it dead on and talk about the simple things on how we can fix it and things of that sort. So Carl, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and your company and what you do? Well, my name is Carl Bunch. I do credit repair. I'm in Upland, and I've been doing credit repair for 15 years now. Um, it's all I do. Uh, I get most of my clients from loan officers and mortgage brokers, usually people that are um, want to buy a house, but they they have problems with their credit. So their loan officers will send me their credit report and say, hey, what can we do for this client? And I'll take a look at it, analyze it to see what I can fix, um, if there's anything that the client should pay, if there's items we shouldn't touch, we should avoid, and uh, send the estimate to the client, the loan officer, and if the client wants to get started, then we go from there. And um, it's a, I like doing it because I like helping people to buy a house. Um, it's very rewarding when somebody who didn't think they could buy a house because they had bad credit, um, and then they realize after talking to me that actually they could, that the requirements for getting a house right now aren't as strict as you would think they are and that also as far as fixing their credit um, it oftentimes is not as impossible as I think it is and so most people that come to me if they're looking to buy a house are surprised that their path to getting that house is easier than they thought exactly and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring him one of the uh, common things I get when I first interview a home buyer because we always do a buyer's consultation. We sit down with them and, and make sure that they understand what they're getting into. And then I often hear, well, I got bad credit. And I go, well, what does that mean? Does that mean you got to, you know, and it means something to different people. Like I had one person who goes, I got bad credit. I go, what do you got? He goes, I only got a 680. Well, okay, that's fine. I mean, it's not 800, but it's good enough to buy a house. So what's the problem? When other people, I got bad credit means maybe they have no credit. Right. You know, they, so... I have bad credit means a lot to different people. The biggest thing is you can't be scared of it. I've been in the industry for now 18 years. I still have no idea how credit works. It's confusing and it's always changing. Even over the past uh, year, 18 months, the credit bureaus have changed guidelines on certain things um, that I've had to adjust to that it's made it easier for me to delete certain things, made it harder for me to delete other things. And so it's had it's forced me to adjust even when I analyze a report and give an estimate on what I can and can't do, or also what the client should and shouldn't do. Um, so it is confusing um, for uh, a consumer to look at their credit report or their credit karma or credit sesame, whatever monitoring service they might use, to look at it and and see what it means because that. Neither the credit bureaus nor the monitoring services are going to make it easy for you to understand. Right. There's, there's no benefit to any credit bureau making it simple for the consumer to understand their credit report. Um, it's nice that some of the monitoring services have made it easier to at least look at your credit report, uh, but it's still confusing to look at it and understand what the heck is going on. Why is my score really low? Why is it kind of average? How am I going to get it up? Um, and that's where somebody like myself, uh, you need to look at it for you and explain it for you in relation to whatever your goal is. 
in this case, buying a house, which as I said, it's not as difficult as you would think right now at this moment in time. Right, and one of the things is that you brought up right now, which is a perfect segue to one of my first questions is, technology has made it so it's easy to monitor credit, Credit Karma, for mm -hmm. example, one of them. Um, they're the ones that you see advertising the most. Uh, so people pay, what, $20-something dollars a month and, and they're monitored. But the problem with that I see also is that since you are now getting a monthly update on your FICO scores, now people are asking, well, I didn't do anything to my credit, and all of a sudden my you know, FICO dropped 80 points or went up 80 points. So what's happening is, um, a perfect example, I have a client that I will not name, um, who we told them, do X, Y, and Z to get your credit up. Well, she did X, Y, and Z. Unfortunately, for the about first 60 days, nothing happened. As a matter of fact, her husband's credit went up, but not hers. So she was pissed, freaking out. And then 90 days later, it reversed. It, it, she did everything she was supposed to do, and her, her credit went to where, and now she's like, oh, I got better credit than my husband. But again, why? she calls me up, she goes, why is it that I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, my husband isn't doing anything, but his FICO went up and mine didn't? It's, there it, was no answer. It's it can be <laughs> difficult. Very often where a loan officer will send me a credit report on this date, and um, then they'll say, here's the report, uh, 45 days later or whatever, and there's this change. What happened? What happened? And I'll have to go through line by line to compare the previous to the current till I finally find what it was that changed. Sometimes it's real subtle, but then it, it caused 20 or 30 points, um, where which sometimes can be the difference between getting approved and not getting approved. So again, it, it's, it can be confusing, and you need a professional like myself to be able to guide you through it and tell you do this, don't do that, and we should be able to get you where you need to be in this time frame so you can buy your house. Exactly, and one, th and one thing I wanna make it very clear is you're not gonna represent yourself in court, so you're not going to represent yourself. First of all, there's nobody gonna call up the bureau who's gonna answer any questions, so let's start there. No, there it there doesn't exist, okay, everything's just a letter. And the only people that are willing to talk to are the actual collection agencies because they want their money. So who do you go to? The people that report, the, that, that control the credit bureaus, the credit bureaus themselves, you can't talk to them. You're not gonna ask them any questions. So you need somebody like Carl to actually sit with you and say, all right guys, here's what it means. Now here's the good news. Carl will sit down with you, look at your credit report, tell you what you need to do, and then tell you what he's going to charge depending on how many accounts he needs to work on, delete, whatever it is. So you know that up front. You're not going to go in and pay somebody $2,000 and then they're going to look at your credit and say this, this, and that. He will actually tell you up front, here's what you need to do, here's what I need to do, and this is the cost. So there is no guessing. There is no, um, well, you know, what are you going to do and not do? So let's start there. The second thing is you can't be scared to ask help for help. If you think you have bad credit or just want better credit, it doesn't hurt to have somebody look at it. As a matter of fact, I highly recommend somebody looks at it. Not me, and not the mortgage guy, because again, we know how to interpret the data once it's on the report, but if you ask me how am I gonna go up 50 points, that's not my job, and that's not the lender's job. The lender's job is to get you the loan. You need somebody else. So I highly recommend that you guys talk to someone like Carl. So if you're thinking of buying this calendar year, and you need you want to buy this summer when the kids are out of school, and you think you have bad credit, let's sit down and talk about it. It doesn't cost anything to talk to Carl, run your report, and figure out what the hell's going on. Now put a plan together, execute it, and then in 90 days, you're ready to go, and now you're not second guessing everything. But you can't be scared to ask for help, and you can't be embarrassed to say that you think you have bad credit. I mean, trust me, You've been in the business how many years, you say? 15 years now. So he's probably laughed at everybody already. I've seen, no matter, I've had people say, oh, my report's bad. Uh, you, it's probably the worst you've ever seen. It's, I've always seen worse. It, when, and some people, they their score's like maybe 600, and I'm like, your score's not that bad, and they think it's terrible. Or some people even, you know, get down to low fives. I'm like, I trust me, I've seen worse. Don't be embarrassed. I've seen it all. Um, but... The point is, at this moment in time, it's not that difficult to buy a house. And buying a house for any family is not only gonna be one of the most important things that 
you're going to do as a family, it's probably going to be the best thing you'll ever do for your family is to buy a house instead of renting because you're buying a house is just going to build that financial base for you that in the future you're putting money basically into an investment account because that equity is going to build the value of the house is going to grow and you're going to use that in the future whether it's a college fund or retirement or whatever but this is the time to do it when rates are still low and FHA mortgage guidelines are not that difficult. Now is the time to have a loan officer run your credit report, send it to me. I will look at it, give you an estimate for free. I don't charge anything for questions and advice or estimates. So now is the perfect time to finally do it. Yeah, and I will be the first to say, Carl's the one that I went to when I told him. I said, hey, my credit could be better also. And it doesn't, it doesn't affect me as much, but it could be better. And he looked at it and it was actually very simple what he, what he wanted me to do. Um, so everybody needs it. So don't be embarrassed. Don't be scared. It's all confidential. We're not going to go and put it on Facebook about, you know, so-and-so has a 580 FICO score and whatever it may be. So my suggestion to you guys is what I like to do is invite some of you guys. I'm going to put Carl's, all his information in the comments below. And then um, I'd like to get a Q&A going of common questions that people can ask Carl. Um, now, everybody has a very unique situation, so we don't, if it's something specific to your case, then I prefer you call Carl and have a conversation. Sure. If it's a general uh, question about credit, ask it. And then um, I'll have I'll invite Carl to come online and because uh, he's on social media also mm -hmm. and ask for the questions. Um, but don't be scared to do it. And I've been discovering that um, uh, more and more people that I'm talking to about who are approaching me about buying a house this year because rates went down and they know it. Um, I ask them, well, why are you buying now? Why didn't you buy before? And it's always the same thing. Well, I know I don't have credit, good enough credit, but now they've got to the point like I need to fix it now or else I'm not going to buy. Because if you're not going to buy at today's rate and you don't fix it and you wait for rates to go up, you're really not going to buy. Uh, so let's just pull the trigger on that one. Is there any last uh, comments or suggestions or anything that uh, you would tell somebody who's scared to have somebody uh, look at their credit because they're embarrassed? Um, I would just say it, it's, it's very often like some of those important things that you know you have to do, if not for yourself, especially for your family, um, that it's uncomfortable because you've never done it before or you feel a little embarrassed because you made mistakes and that's why you know you have bad credit sometimes it's sometimes i find married couples to where one spouse didn't tell the other spouse about the mistakes in the past and they have bad credit and they're embarrassed because of that they their their spouse doesn't know but like any important thing in your marriage uh, it, it's gonna, if even it feels uncomfortable, you know you've got to do it. And this is just one of those things to where you, you say, oh, you know what, I'm not gonna feel, I'm not gonna be afraid of this, I'm not gonna feel uncomfortable about it, I'm just gonna go ahead and have a professional look at it and, and tell us what to do, and I'm finally gonna put it behind me. Exactly, the people who have the most uncomfortable conversations are usually the people that grow in life. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is an uncomfortable conversation, so let's have it. Let's get it out in the open and let's address it, right guys? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, Carl's information on there. I invite you guys to give him a call, set up a time to talk to him and just be blunt and have him take a look at it. And I promise he won't laugh and if he does, he'll do it when you're not there. So you don't have to worry about it either way. That's right, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be a friendly laugh. Um, and uh, you don't have to, it can be very easy. We don't have to meet at my home office in Upland. Uh, I can, if you use something like Credit Karma, um, when you call me, I can just log on and look at it with you right there on the phone and uh, go over what I can do, what you should do, how we can get you to where, get you approved for a house. So it can be very quick and easy. And again, it's no obligation. Um, the thing to remember about mortgage guidelines right now, I'll tell you what you need to do to get approved because everybody's basically working on the same approval guidelines. If 
Paco can't get you approved, nobody's gonna get you approved. So you're gonna have to fix the things that I'm identifying for you regardless. Exactly, so ignoring it doesn't make it go away, is the point. Yes. You gotta address it either way. Yes. So you might as well address it today as opposed to a year from now. Yeah, unless you wanna ignore it for seven years, <laughs> then yes, eventually it will go away, but really, are you going to put off buying a house for seven years when you could have a house this year? That's right. I had I had one of my posts where I put uh, the best time to buy was five years ago, meaning the best time to buy was always in the past. Right. So five years from now, we don't want to be having the same conversation about what right. are you going to buy, right? All right, guys, I appreciate your time. Until next time, this is Paco the Realtor and Carl Bunch, and uh, hopefully we will get a few of you motivated, energized to go ahead and uh, move forward. Thank you very much. So why don't you guys get to know me? Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Hope you love the content. Subscribe below or follow me on social media. Just type Paco the Realtor.